How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're making beer rocks, which are sweet buns filled with a savory meat filling. They're the perfect beer snack. Let's go to the kitchen and check them out. I could not find any concrete information about the origin of these tasty snacks. Some say they are Russian, some say they are German, and apparently they are very popular in America. One thing is for certain, the name beer rock is derived from the Russian word pirog, which simply means pie. And I guess it kind of resembles a pie. It has a meat and vegetable filling, but instead of pastry, it is wrapped in soft bread dough. And no matter where they came from, these things are super tasty. Savory filling, sweet outer coating, it just calls for a cold beer. But it will go well with any other beverage too. But enough of that, let's get to it and see what we need to make them. For the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, yeast, salt, sugar, softened butter, milk and an egg. The filling is very basic. We only need ground beef, white onions, white cabbage, salt and pepper. You could of course fill this dough with other fillings too. Now as for the equipment, we need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe and a brush. We'll start by making the filling so that it cools down whilst the dough is rising. In a small pan, add a splash of oil, then bring it over to the hob and set it onto high heat. Once the oil is nice and hot, add the beef. Spread it out, but don't stir it. Just spread it out so it covers the bottom of the pan and then leave it to cook for 2 minutes. We want to get some color on it. Color equals flavor. Once it's browned nicely, add the other ingredients. The salt, the pepper, the cabbage and the onions. Then give it a good stir and keep cooking this for 5 more minutes on high heat, stirring it occasionally. If you want the filling to be slightly more juicy, you could leave the cabbage out and then add it to the beef once it's cooked. But it's good either way. Now transfer the filling to a bowl and then leave it to cool down. If you're not making the buns on the same day, you could prep this filling a day ahead of time and just keep it in the fridge until you need it. Okay, that's done. Now we can move on to making our dough. I'm using cold milk because I'm kneading this dough by hand. It's going to warm up a lot. Plus my kitchen's super warm. It is the middle of summer as I'm filming this. Now in a large bowl, combine the milk, the egg, the yeast, the salt, the sugar and the butter. I have videos in which I advise not to add butter too soon and not combine eggs and butter in the beginning, but in this case it's fine. It's a small amount of butter and the dough is very low hydration, so it will still be very easy to work with. Give it all a good mix, you want to dissolve the salt and sugar and hydrate the yeast. Now add the flour, get your scraper and mix it to a dough. And if the scraper is not doing the job anymore, continue on by hand. Once everything's nicely mixed, pop the dough out on the table and start kneading it. This dough is not sticky at all, so the regular kneading method will do. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, then using the fingers of my left hand I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. Knead the dough for 5 minutes. Once you're done, the dough should be nice and smooth and cohesive. Now we can pop it in a bowl, take its temperature and then start fermentation. Around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit just about right for this. My one came out a little bit cooler, but my kitchen's super warm and half a degree here or there is not a big deal anyway. Now cover your dough bowl and leave it to ferment for around 2 hours or until it's doubled in size. Some of you may have noticed that we didn't fold the dough during bulk fermentation. I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible and make the dough as loose as possible too so it's nice and puffy. Now at this point you can weigh your dough and then divide it into 4 pieces. You can of course make more smaller beer rocks, let's say divide it into 6. I wouldn't suggest making them any bigger than this though. Smaller bite sized ones might be quite fun but it would take more work to make them. At the end of the day, it's totally up to you. And regardless of how many you make, after dividing, we need to shape them up. Take a piece of dough, lay it with the smooth side down and flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, pick it up, pinch the seam together at the bottom and that's your shaping done. And I must have repeated this line about 300 times by now. After pre-shaping, cover them up, leave them to rest for 20 minutes. The resting stage relaxes the gluten, makes it easier for us to shape them, or to fill them, I should say. If you watched my Alu Parata video, this might be familiar to you. And if you haven't watched it, I do suggest checking it out. That's in the flatbreads and crackers playlist. But back to the beer rocks. Flatten the dough ball out, so it's nice and big. As you can see, it's slightly bigger than the palm of my hand. Now take a quarter of the filling, because we're making four, and place it into the middle of the dough. And now all you want to do is work that dough up and around the filling. And you can use your thumb to help out. As you fold the dough around the filling, press the filling down. And don't rush, take your time. Do it slowly and gradually. 
As you keep going, the dough will come up higher and higher, and at the end it'll start coming together. This shaping method ensures that there's no air pockets trapped inside the bun, and it works really well for stuffing flatbreads. And right, once you get to the top, pinch the dough together, and there you have it, that's one way to shape a beer rock. I'm not sure if the original one is shaped like this, but this is the technique I like to use, and it works really well. And if you messed up the first one, well you got three more to practice on. Leave plenty of space between them when you place them on a the tray. Right, they're ready for the final proof. Cover them up and leave them to ferment for around one to one and a half hours. You want them to be visibly puffed up. If they take longer, leave them for longer. Preheat the oven during the final proof. 260 degrees Celsius, fan on. That's 320 degrees Fahrenheit. These things are puffed up beautifully. Now all we need to do is brush them with some milk and then bake them. You can use egg wash if you want, but all the recipes I've found use milk. By the way, there's many more glazes that can be used for bread making. I actually made a video where I compared 15 of the most common used glazes in bread making. So if you're interested, you want to find some good ideas, check it out in the Principles of Baking playlist. And you'll find many more interesting videos there about bread making techniques and principles. On this channel, we talk about both the how and the why, because understanding principles is far more valuable than knowing a recipe. And also, whilst I'm still brushing these buns, if you ever want to share pictures of your bakes, check out my Flickr group. We have a nice little community there sharing their breads with others and myself and having discussions. You'll find a link for that down below. Right, let's get these bad boys in the oven. They'll take around 25 minutes. It's not dark in the crust too soon and baking them on the lowest shelf of the oven. Saying that, my oven doesn't have the bottom heating element, but I guess it's up to each and every one of us to learn how to use our own ovens. But regardless of how you have to bake them, once they're golden brown all over, they're ready. And don't they look just perfect? These might just be the roundest buns I've ever made. And I think I owe it all to the filling technique. If you've never tried it before, it's definitely worth learning because you can use it for other breads and other fillings. I'm actually getting ready to film another flatbread recipe. This time, it'll be a kima parata. Now well, here's our beer rock. Perhaps the greatest beer snack in the world. The filling is slightly crumbly. That's why I mentioned earlier that you could add fresh cabbage instead of cooking it. And I guess you could use slightly fattier beef. But anyway, it's super tasty. And if you don't cut it like I did, just eat it, then you should not have any problems with it crumbling. Oktoberfest is coming soon. I mean, I personally don't celebrate it, but I guess this would be perfect for it. If there's any Germans out there, or any Russians, let me know. Where does this thing come from? And tell me whether I've stayed true to the concept. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever tried it before? Do let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here, subscribe to the channel, click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.